Welcome home. <laughs> Long day. I thought you'd be home earlier, you see. I must admit, I was starting to grow a little impatient. <laughs> Let me just stand up here. Hmm? I apologize. I made myself very at home. But don't worry, I'll tidy up the mess that I made. What am I doing? <laughs> what a silly question to ask. Why, I'm looking at photographs of you, of course. Is that not obvious? Mm -hmm. I will admit that I have been looking around your place a little whilst I waited for you to come home. I've never been to your house before, my dear, so of course I was curious. <sighs> Everything smells so very like you. That lovely, unique scent. <laughs> Is that strange? Well... Uh, perhaps a little. Oh dear. It makes me feel a little sheepish to admit now, but the words just keep spilling out, I suppose. I looked around, of course. I looked at your clothes, the bed, the belongings that you keep. Your furnishings are much more exciting than mine, which intrigues me greatly. I was going to look around your kitchen and see if I could prepare a meal for when you got home, but I started looking at the bookshelf and... <laughs> and this photo book was just laying there, and I was so curious. So many photographs from when you were so very small and dated not so long ago, too. This one here. Um. <laughs> so cute. So very tiny. Look. <laughs> you look be only four or five years of age in this one, and I was already over 90 years old. Isn't that so interesting? So marvelous how fast humans age. I was so immersed thinking about that and looking at all these glorious photos of you that I didn't hear or smell you come back. And I was planning on pouring you some tea, baking some treats, even. <sighs> but I became so distracted here. There's no fireplace in this little home of yours, and the walls are not wooden. The floors bare of rugs. But it is a home as well. And a wonderful one, I see. Everything smells so lifted, so of you. I just became so intoxicated by that scent. <laughs> I might have even fallen asleep a little here. What a shame, <sighs> right when I was going to surprise you too. <sighs> well, 
there is no need to sit and sulk over it. Hmm? The past is in the past. The present is all that matters, I suppose. Hmm, but still... Well, regardless, why don't you sit down and I'll fetch you that tea, hmm? I could really do with some myself. I must admit, I am quite parched. <laughs> Just right here is fine, hmm? Sit here and wait for me, won't you? Um, the prepackaged kind. I can't find any. Oh, well, I don't have time to bake some any longer, so. And I've been practicing too. I so wanted you to try my baking. You have to promise to try it, okay? Um, for now, do you have any of the packaged kind? Top cupboard. Top cupboard. Okay. Okay. Here's your tea. Mm -hmm. Any sugar? No? <laughs> mm. Well, I don't usually drink mine with any either, but today is a special occasion. I feel like something sweet. Unusually good. Sometimes a little change of pace can be so refreshing. Just a few little grains and everything is suddenly so different. <laughs> well, things can get a little tiring if they 
always stay the same, don't you think? I've become very tired. Why am I here? <laughs> Is that a joke, my dear? Why, I came to see you, of course. Finding where you lived was easy. Kitsune have very good noses, after all. I plan to surprise you. But as soon as I walked in, well, I was so very overwhelmed. You truly do have a wonderful little home. It's so different from my own, but it certainly has its charms. And like I said, it's so very full of you. Your essence, your scent, your very personality. <laughs> I really like it. You see, enough that if you hadn't come home when you did, I might have fallen into a deep, contented sleep. <laughs> How funny that would have been when you came home. He tastes better from a different cup, too. Thinking that it's one of yours. You were so surprised to see me. Even though I didn't plan to surprise you. That shocked me a little at first. But now I have come to understand. Perhaps you wouldn't have expected me to be here. That is quite logical, but it never crossed my mind before now. Perhaps this is not something that I would usually choose to do. Perhaps it is strange. Perhaps it is a good thing that the toll this place is taking on me is so powerful. Perhaps it is good that I am able to be here. Well, I did not mean to scare you. I would never hurt you. That... That was not my intention in coming here. It's easy for me to forget about human boundaries in the heat of a moment. Even if I am not human. Well, I have been quite timid in the past. But I am putting an end to that now. I'm going to do what I want to do. I came here today to say what I want to say. No more restraint. No more boundaries. Even if I did want to see your home and look at pictures of you from when you were small, well, the real reason I came here was to talk to you, face to face. I am going away, tomorrow, for good.
I'm leaving this town at dawn, and I will not be coming back. I have come to realize the negative energy here really is much worse than I originally thought. It is toxic thick in the air. I thought that because I was not human, it would not affect me. I thought wrong. It seems that the curse of this town has started to claim me of its own. I do not know quite how bad it is yet, not fully. I do not know if it will become worse. It's getting much harder to fight back against by the day. Obviously, I'm starting to lose grasp of what is rational and what is right. It is so difficult. My head is spinning even now, trying to follow a logical train of thought. My compulsions are so very strong. We kitsune can be predatory by nature, possessive. I have never experienced these feelings before, and amplified by this town's atmosphere, it has been quite overwhelming. My head becomes clouded for periods full of thoughts that I don't recognize as my own, and when I try to understand them, they are terrible thoughts. Which is why I've decided this. I've come to this decision before I lose grasp, before anything out of my control happens. They, the urges, that is, are so powerful. I worry that it's only a matter of time, an incredibly small amount of time. The longer I sit in my cottage and think and ponder and come to my own conclusions, the shorter that span of time grows. It took me a long time to decide this. It is a difficult decision. I'm not sure if this town's energy is what's leading me to think this, or I've never felt this way about moving on before. I have never experienced pain like this before. I have never felt an emotion that grows sharper the longer I dwell on it. I have never met feelings so strong that I can't get them out of my head. It is terrifying to have something like this happen to me. For things to be so out of my control. All for one human. It is not worth it, I attempted to tell myself for a while. Once my pain, my sorrow, my abandonment passed, I went a phase where I tried to convince myself that all of this was silly, a child's crush, something fleeting and youthful, something that I would be able to laugh off in a day, a week, a year or two. 
never escaping this place and freeing my mind past. And maybe that is so. Maybe these feelings are something that will pass. Maybe this is something that can go away, will go away. Maybe my understanding of all of this really is as naive and selfish and one-sided as I think it is. And maybe that's exactly why I don't want to let it go. If this town and the temporary insanity that it's brought upon me if I can learn anything from this experience, I think, I think that maybe I've learned that it can be okay to be reckless, that it is okay to be young and let myself free. Maybe it is all right to be impulsive. Maybe it is fine to act upon my feelings. I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life, of your life, of our lives, together. This is selfish, this is stupid, this is unfair. But it's not entirely irrational for me to want this, I know. And it is okay for me to want this. It is completely natural for me to desire stability, for me to, to fall in love. Perhaps the human was not, not expected, but it is not wrong. I regret nothing. I regret nothing except how we last left off. I'm willing to take blame for my side. I'm willing to accept that I let the circumstances in which we met slip from my mind. I was so drowned in my own thoughts, I was so overwhelmed with what was new, with the feelings blooming inside of me. But I did not think about you. About you as a person with thoughts and feelings and choices, with problems that I both do not know and do not understand. You are not an object. You do not belong to me, and you have your own free will. I, I know this now. I had a lot of time to think about this. I am sorry that you have faced pain. I do not know what ails you, and I want to help you. I do. But if you do not want my help, I would never force that upon you. I want, I would like to be able to understand you more as a person beyond an object of my affection, beyond somebody with sad eyes who stood at the edge of the cliff on that fateful day. I want to know the real you. I want to fall in love with that version of you too, and any other sides that exist as well. I want to love you unconditionally for as long as we both live. If you... If you are okay with this... If you would be willing 
to love me, to stay by my side no matter what, to grow together as people and in age, to go on dates, to do silly, reckless things like children, like teenagers, to be free together of this place, this town, of this stifling world. I think I should be going now. I am sorry for breaking in. I suppose my thoughts were clouded again for a while. I apologize to you whilst my head is clear. So, I will be waiting for you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. sharp. I'll be waiting right there for your answer at the place where we met. At the place where we met. I'll be waiting to run away with you. My dear. <laughs>